Hello everybody, welcome back to the LTL Mandarin School YouTube channel. My name is Max and I work at the marketing team here at LTL. Today's video is a video that we've never done before and it's ridiculous why, because this app is the daddy of all apps when it comes to living in China. Trust me when I tell you that. Today we're going to teach you how to use WeChat and learning Chinese on WeChat. If you are a regular watcher and subscriber to our YouTube channel, thank you very much for joining us again. Welcome back to our channel. If this is the first time you've come to our channel, welcome along. We're absolutely delighted to have you join our community for this video. First things first, if you could please give us a like and a subscribe, that would be fantastic. If you like China or learning Mandarin or even learning languages, things about culture, food, funny videos, if you like any of that sort of stuff, I recommend you hang around and like and subscribe because we've got plenty more content on all kinds of different things. We've tasted food in China, we've taken taxis in China, we teach you how to learn Chinese online and offline, we give away freebies on our YouTube, we've got it all. So if you like any of that sort of stuff, stick around because I'm sure you will enjoy being a part of our growing community here on YouTube. Okay, but you're here to learn more about using WeChat and how to learn Chinese on WeChat. So let's dive straight in to how to use WeChat. Okie dokie, so let's jump straight into WeChat. So WeChat is essentially, as I said before, the daddy of all apps in China. This is because it combines so many different apps all into one. So you think WhatsApp, Facebook, these things that are huge separately in the West, they're actually almost combined all into one giant app in China. And I challenge you to find someone who lives in China or is Chinese and does not have WeChat. It's absolutely massive and you can do pretty much everything you need to do using this app. So fundamentally in the basics of WeChat is that it is a messaging app. So this is an app where you can do pretty much everything you can do on WhatsApp. You can do chats with individual people, you can do group chats, you can do voice recordings, you can recall, all that sort of stuff, which we'll come to shortly in a minute. But you can also do a number of other things such as buy things as well, which we'll also come on to later. You can search for people nearby, you can update your profile. You've almost got a Facebook wall, which is the moment section. And WeChat, the great thing about it is it's changing all the time. So this video, we're filming mid 2021, but it could well be very different when you look at WeChat in the future. So the great thing about it is it's always evolving and changing. So that is essentially what WeChat is in a nutshell. It's the daddy of all apps. So we've discussed other videos before. I remember using the same phrase for Pleco. So this is another app I reviewed, which you can find more about at the top. There should be a link up there to watch that video. That would be the daddy of all translation apps. So for any foreigner in China, Pleco is essential, but Chinese people in China do not need Pleco. However, anyone in China needs WeChat. I challenge you to go to China for a number of weeks and survive without WeChat. It will make your life infinitely harder. And we're going to discover exactly why that is now, along with some of the tips and tricks about the app. Okie dokie. So the first feature that we want to talk into in more detail is messaging, which I said is the fundamental part of WeChat. So you can see I've shuffled myself across the screen slightly. That's because we want to show you what WeChat actually looks like inside. So our video man Cam is going to magically make WeChat appear on the screen right here now. Okay, so this is WeChat and as you can see, you can have a whole host of chats just like you can online or WhatsApp or iMessage or whatever one you use. And very simply, you can have individual chats, as we mentioned before, and also group chats. This is very common in WhatsApp, of course, in WeChat as well. There are many different groups that you can become a part of. Groups get very large in size. I believe there's a maximum of 500 members 
for groups so they are actually capped and you can get groups for lots of different things you can have work groups you can have social groups so for example if you have a football or rugby team you'd probably be part of one of the group chats there you could have learner groups as well so there are lots of mandarin learner groups we have student groups at ltl where students can pre-arrange their own events or they can talk about learning techniques and whatnot so there's lots of different ways you can use groups and inside of the chats there's a couple of features i wanted to mention so the one thing actually it's a limitation about wechat that i find slightly irritating i like to send voice messages to people i just prefer it to texting i find it easier to get my point across in a shorter space of time whereas on whatsapp you can record a voice message for i think up to 30 minutes long maybe even longer on wechat you have to do 60 seconds so what i found sometimes beforehand is i'm sending a message and i've cut myself off without even realizing so you have to send voice clips in one minute windows which can be a bit irritating but it is what it is you can still send it the other feature about WeChat, and this is one that I really do love, is the stickers. Now, anyone who's anyone who knows WeChat is very familiar with stickers. So these are essentially GIFs and you can make your own ones up and play around with them. You can get your friends involved in them. You can use common ones. There's always lots of new stickers going on, depending on trends and whatnot. But they're a really funny way, especially in group chats to perhaps take the mic out of someone or to get your point across in a more humorous way than perhaps with words or spoken. You can have a maximum of 300 stickers in your arsenal, which actually I found isn't enough. Most foreigners max out the 300 pretty quickly, so you have to manage them and use them wisely. Again, this may of course change in the future, but I've got a number of very funny stickers. You can get all kinds of different types of cartoons, anime, rude and crude ones, lots of different types. They're really, really good fun to use. Another very useful feature on WeChat is the ability to be able to recall a message, which I believe you can now also do in WhatsApp. But this has been a feature that's been a part of WeChat for a long, long time. And it saves a lot of embarrassment. I'm sure we've all been in that situation where we've sent a message to someone that we didn't mean to send it to. We're only human, we all make mistakes, it happens. The recall function on WeChat is active for two minutes. So when you've sent a message, you've got two minutes to be able to hold and recall it. And that basically means delete the message. So if you sent a message to someone that you didn't mean to send it to, you have two minutes in which you can recall it. When those two minutes are up though, the message is out there and it's going nowhere. It's stuck there, I'm afraid but you've got the two minutes to realise. And quite often people find, ah, I've sent the message to the wrong person within the first few seconds. You do it quickly without thinking. So that's one really useful feature. Now, the other one I love that isn't a part of something like WhatsApp is the money transfer or Hongbao feature. If you don't know what a Hongbao is, it basically translates quite literally to red envelope. This is the very cultural Chinese thing where you essentially give someone a physical red envelope, commonly done over Chinese New Year, from adults to children. And inside it contains a monetary gift, normally with a lucky Chinese number in like 88 kwai, or if you're lucky, 888 kwai as an example. Certainly nothing with the number four in, but that's for another video. So what you can do on WeChat with the Hongbao is send them to people in a number of clicks. It's really, really easy. You can send a maximum of 200 CMY in one Hongbao, which is roughly, very roughly 20 pounds in British pounds. With this, you can send it to anyone. So let's say I've gone out for dinner with four other people, Campbell, Katie and Maureen, three of my colleagues at LTL. And let's say Maureen paid the bill and the bill came to 200 CMY. That means Campbell, Katie and myself owe 50 CMY. Rather than fiddle around with wallets and physical cash, let's say I don't have the money on me or I need to send it by bank. It's a bit of hassle, it's not so easy. On WeChat, you can simply ping the Hongbao straight to Marine within a few seconds and she's received all the money. The transfer feature is essentially the same but you can transfer more money. So whereas the Hongbao is specifically capped at 200 CMY, 
the transfer allows you to go to, I don't know how large the figure is myself, but you can send, I know at least 10,000 CMY in one transaction. You will have to verify this. They have a number of verification methods that change all the time. Maybe you need to verify the person's name that you're transferring to, or maybe you need to do a selfie or confirm your card number, something like this. But you can transfer money to anyone else in WeChat in seconds. So these are the core and fundamental things that you can do in the messaging area, which is where WeChat came to prominence originally. Okay, so it's time to move away from the messaging and you'll see across the bottom of the screenshot here, there is a section called Discover. So this is kind of where the social media element to WeChat comes in. So we go away from the messaging and we move over and there's a number of features that you'll see here. And again, this is a great example of how WeChat evolves because it really changes all the time. The core part of Discover comes from the thing at the top, which is called Moments. This essentially is a Facebook wall. So everyone who you have on your WeChat can post moments, they're called. And this is basically a social media post. So people t say what they've been up to today, maybe they're up for dinner, um, maybe they've just got vaccined, maybe it could be a number of different things. But there are other recent additions to WeChat, which you can also see. So the one below moments called channels or live, or it can change, I think, depending on what language you're using. This essentially is WeChat's idea of keeping up to date with video, because of course we've got TikTok, Douyin, we've had Snapchat, we had Vine a number of years ago, lots of apps that focus on video and of course, Right now, video and even more relevant, live streaming are so big, WeChat don't want to miss out on the boat here. So you can see again from top to bottom, you've got live streams and channels. And this is basically where people can film short videos or reels as Instagram likes to call them, or even go live so you can watch people live. There's more detail in them that you can see which i won't go into now you can explore it yourself and it's actually a good place to learn chinese but we're going to come on to that later on in the video aside from moments and live streaming and channels there's also a few other sections that you'll see down towards the bottom and another one that chinese people i've found particularly like to use is the people nearby feature it's quite obvious what it means but essentially you can just flick the on off switch you don't have to be available to be found by everyone, you have to give it your permission. If you decide to share your location, you can basically be found by anyone else using the people nearby feature within a number of kilometers. I think it's five or 10 kilometers. And what you might find if you turn the function on, you will find potentially you will get added by a number of Chinese people who will just send you messages. This again is something that we're gonna come on to later but it's another way of using Discover on WeChat. Right then, the next part of WeChat that we want to show you is WeChat Pay. So again, this is a whole different entity, something that a WhatsApp or a Line or many other messaging apps don't boast. And this is really, really great because it allows you to pay for a number of different things. And Really, there are plenty of things, as you'll be able to see on the screen, that you can actually utilize this for. So the main and most widely used part of WeChat Pay is just generally going to convenience stores. So for example, you could have a 7-Eleven, you could be going to Walmart, you could be going anywhere to buy something, and rather than hand over cold hard cash, which is a very rare sight in China these days, you scan the QR code or they scan you, and you hand over your money through your WeChat wallet. It's interesting to note that you don't have to top your WeChat wallet up with actual money. So what will happen is your WeChat wallet will be linked to your bank account in China. And because of that, you don't actually need to hold funds in your WeChat wallet itself. You can have a balance of zero, but if your bank account has money in, which I'm sure it will do, then the transaction will go through. You can transfer money from your bank account to WeChat Pay if you so wish, 
but it doesn't really make a difference. The same thing will be true. If you do have money in your WeChat wallet, let's say I've got 100 CMY in there and I've just spent 50, the balance will drop down. So that's the main thing you'll use it for. Another example is one that I touched on earlier. So sending friends hongbaos or red packets if you owe them money. But there are a number of other features, as you can see. So one that I really liked and found really convenient when I first moved to China was topping up my mobile phone. So if I run out of data or I want to have more data or I just want to top up my contract, I simply go into mobile top up. I choose the amount I want to top up. As you can see, there's different amounts there for you and then you can top it up nice and easy. You can also use WeChat Pay to pay your home utilities. So for example, in England, I have to go to different companies and find the best deal and whatnot. But in WeChat and in China, it's really simple. It's all there for you. So you've got your Shui Fei, which is your water bill. You've got your Dian Fei, which is your electric bill and a whole host of other things. So that's really useful in that you can pay your utilities straight through WeChat within a few clicks, nice and simple. You also have the ability to buy things, so train tickets or hotels or even flight tickets, which I've done myself a number of times on WeChat before. In fact, it's generally cheaper to buy plane tickets, for example, on WeChat than it might be to do on something like Skyscanner or Kayak especially if you're flying internally in China, sometimes you can get cheaper deals. So if you're looking to book a flight ticket, let's say from New York through to Beijing or Shanghai to Singapore, use your usual methods, of course, so your sky scanners, your kayaks or whatever, Google Flights. But if you've got WeChat and you've got a bank account linked to it, go in and check and see what the difference in prices. You may find yourself a cheeky little deal. And a number of other things you can see on the screen as well. Commonly used ones are taxi. So WeChat is actually linked to the Chinese app Didi, which is basically China's form of Uber, where you can just get a taxi booked straight away and have it to you. And you can also order hotels on there as well. Another one of China's giant apps is called Alipay, and they also have their own pay section, which essentially is Alipay. And you can also do the same things on Alipay. So you can send packets to people, you can pay utilities, you can book flights, trains, taxis, you can do all that. We actually did a video on comparing WeChat Pay with Alipay, which you can check out. There's a link that should be at the top of the screen right now. And if you want to find out more about Alipay and how to use it as a foreigner, we've done two videos on Alipay. One is how to use Alipay and its number of features because it's not just a pay platform, there's other things you can do as well. And the other one is Alipay for foreigners. So how we as foreigners can use Alipay and the updates that have happened to it in the last few years. So those videos will be linked above and you can also find them in the description right down there. Right then, it's time to delve into the world of learning on WeChat and you might think that you can't really learn Chinese on WeChat because this is an app focused around messaging and pay. But there's three methods that I'd like to show you where WeChat actually might be a really good way for you to learn Chinese from anywhere in the world. And that's the good thing about something like this is that you can pick this up anywhere. So let's go through our three ways on how to learn Chinese on WeChat. Okay, number one, it's very simple but it's very effective and it's easy to fall into the trap of going back to your native language. When you message people on WeChat, only use Chinese. Do not be tempted to go back to, let's say your default of English or Spanish or whatever your native language is. If you've got a friend who is Chinese on WeChat, only message them in Chinese. If they come back to you in English or Spanish or French, whatever your native language is, go back to Chinese and keep reverting back to Chinese. Eventually, they will stick with Chinese with you and Chinese will be the language that sticks. It might sound a little bit selfish. Of course, if you've got a language partner, try and 50-50 it up a little bit. But if you've just got a general friend who's Chinese and you don't really have a set routine, try and force Chinese to be the number one language. Because what you can do, you can message them and they might message you back with a mistake that you made. You can also read exactly what they've done and try and mimic, imitate and copy the way they type. So maybe 
you use a certain word, but you don't quite use it correctly. So why not take the method that your Chinese friend has used and incorporate that into your text in the future? So message your friends and locals or Chinese people only in Mandarin. That's tip number one. Tip number two on how to learn Chinese on WeChat is to utilize the people nearby feature, the one that we looked at earlier from the Discover menu. And I said this is something that Chinese people actually quite like to do with foreigners, and they do this actually not all the time, but on a number of occasions to practice their English. And I know this because I've had Chinese people admit this to me. So when you're using the people nearby function, obviously it's better if you are in China or Asia generally, because there'll be much more people to choose from. But try it, see where you are now. You'll have seen on my screenshot earlier, I'm in London at the moment. There's only one person with the people nearby function switched on in the nearest 15 kilometers, but there may well be more nearby you. So use it and use it as a way of getting to meet people and speaking Mandarin by simply typing in Mandarin from the very start. Tip number three on how to learn Chinese on WeChat is one of the newer functions, again we touched on earlier, is the live stream. So you'll have seen there's a load of different live streams and you've got live streams for lots of different categories. So you would have seen news, learning, gaming, trending topics. So pick a topic that's relevant to you, one that you can relate to a bit more, and just watch a few live streams and read the comments that come in and try and absorb yourself in it. It can be quite intimidating at first, I'm not going to lie, there's so much going on there. Chinese interfaces are generally quite busy and quite distracting with lots of things flying around and popping up. Whereas maybe with more westernized apps, the design generally is more clean and there's not so much going on on the screen. So it does take time, but you'll get used to it and it will really help improve your Mandarin. So that's three quick fire tips on how to learn Chinese on WeChat. Right, so that is pretty much all the main features of WeChat. As you can see, it's actually a really in-depth app with lots and lots of stuff going on inside there, which is always changing. But as of right now, they are the key points you need to understand how to use WeChat and how to learn Chinese on WeChat. Now you probably want to know how you can get your hands on WeChat. Well, it's very easy and thankfully you don't need to be in China or have a Chinese app store or anything like that. As you can see in the screenshots that we had on before, all of my app generally was in English, apart from a couple of the mini programs which are aside and linked to WeChat. So you can download this wherever you are in the world. You can download it on Android or iPad, and you can actually also download the messaging platform on your computer as well. So I have a MacBook and I use WeChat for Mac as well. So it's really useful sometimes if I just wanna, I prefer typing messages on the computer can be quicker than using your thumbs. And also when you're working on the computer all day, rather than having to pick up your phone and get distracted, you can do it on your Mac as well. So that's really useful. You can download it anywhere in the world, so it doesn't matter where you are, on any device, and it's that simple. So you can get your hands on WeChat right now. So if you're still with us, thanks very much for watching. I know it's been a long video, but we wanted to cover as much as we could in a shorter time as possible. So that's the general functions of WeChat. We plugged our other videos as well about Alipay and all the other stuff. As I mentioned at the start of the video, if you haven't yet, do subscribe to our channel. We really, really appreciate it and we're growing a bigger and bigger community by the year. So it'd be great to have you on board and we'll bring you more content very, very soon. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. And I'm sure we'll get plenty of stuff for the bloopers reel. Better not put that in, cunt. That's gonna go in the bloopers. That is another one take. Shove that up your bloopers. Effectively, you can just turn yourself on. No, let's not say that. That's a wrap.